please listen to the legal disclaimer at the end of this video. Good evening, this is Boiler Williams from NotLegalAdvice.org and this video series is what I'm calling Credit Ray John Cut. It's a one-shot, unrehearsed um, episode of Credit Talk and just normal talk, you know, whatever I feel like talking about usually. Um, today is the first edition. I've done other um, pieces of this series, but I uh, saved the edition number one to talk about something that is uh, near to me. Um, I was reading Reading Their Minds, How to Hear the Hear What the Marketplace Wants and Build a Huge Business by Sandy Krakowski. I'll put that link um, in this post to that book. Um, so what this lady is talking about is don't forget why you're doing this. A lot of people focus on how to do it. If you read my website, there's a lot of ideas on how to deal with debt collectors and how to deal with credit issues and those type of things. But why? Why would you do that? Well, I'm going to tell you why I do it and maybe you'll feel the same way. If, if you notice by looking at my website, I don't really sell anything. Eventually I'm going to put a book up there, but right now I don't really sell anything and I don't make any money off of my website. If you look behind me, you can tell <laughs> you, you can tell that uh, I don't have a maid. So uh, anyhow, uh, I do this to protect my rights is one reason. Um, I believe that we're born with rights. If you're a religious person, you might say that your rights come from God. If you're not a religious person, you might say you're just born with innate rights. So you're born with these rights and it has nothing to do with the government. The government doesn't decide what rights you have or the government doesn't take away your rights. What they do is they decide how they can um, interact with you. So um, your rights don't come from the government. They come from, you're either born with them or they come from God, depending on your religious views. So um, these rights that you have, you have to protect because I've said this before, I say this on the radio a lot, I'm, uh, I was on a radio show quite a bit, and if, if you don't stand up for your rights, especially with debt collectors, nobody's going to. There are no debt collector police that are going to go and beat up on somebody in a sweatshop that does collections, that calls people and tells you all kinds of crap that's not true, that harasses your grandmother. There's no police out there that are going to stick up for you. you got to stick up for yourself. And that's what I'm about, is sticking up for myself. I've gone through quite a few lawsuits and have gotten pretty good at them. Not, uh, perf not perfect by any means. There's always room for improvement. But, um, you know, I haven't lost a lawsuit in a long time. And um, I'm not sure I've ever lost a lawsuit. Uh, when I first started this stuff, I settled twice. And uh, since then, uh, haven't really lost a lawsuit. I've never had a judgment against me um, since I started doing this. I don't think I did before that, but that's neither here nor there. Um, so the main reason that I do this is to protect, to protect my rights. I hope that you're um, really into protecting your rights. Like I said, if you don't protect them, nobody will. And then over time, they'll just erode, and these rights won't be there anymore. So stand up for your rights. <laughs> I said this on a podcast uh, probably a year or so ago. And stand up for your rights. I always have a, a Bob Marley song going in my head. So anyhow, it makes me smile. Um, so you know the the next thing about fighting debt collectors is, in my mind, and I'm just telling you why I think it's important, is who do you owe? If um, Palisades is collecting, uh, sends you letters and, and they say you owe them money, do you really owe them money? Um, say that's from a Chase account. Say you had a Chase bank, Visa, you didn't pay on it, and all of a sudden these collectors are, are calling you. Okay, that's, you know, that's a fairly likely scenario. So do you really owe Palisades money? Have you ever had a contract with them? Did you make any agreements with them? No, of course you didn't. So the agreement was be was between Palisades and Chase to buy these accounts, right? When that transaction happened, were you party to that? No, of course you weren't. Did you guarantee those payments? Did you 
guarantee that say it's fifteen hundred dollars did you tell Palisades you were good for it and you would honor that contract no they made a poor business decision buying that account unless uh, of course you you cough up money but um, the risk is theirs so they bought that account between four and seven cents on the dollar so let's just say it's a thousand dollar account so so we can do the math pretty easily um, if it's a thousand dollar account um, if it's a thousand dollars account of course it's forty to seventy dollars that they paid for that so when they go to court and they say that they were damaged the thousand dollars and then all these fees and all that stuff that they put on there they weren't really damaged a thousand dollars if they paid forty dollars for your account the most they could have been damaged is forty dollars so there's a legal term called unjust enrichment so if that um, is something that interests you or you just want to see what that's about um, it'd be a good google term to, to Google unjust enrichment. So, um, so, so the last reason that I fight debt collectors and I fight them tooth and nail is it's the right thing to do. Um, you know, they're doing a lot of mean things. If you uh, do a search, um, I'm writing my book right now, and there was a lady in uh, I think she was in Missouri read my book and uh, the, the facts are right in my book but I believe it was in Missouri that um, they called her and said well what did you use your visa for that you're delinquent on now and she said that her daughter died and she buried her daughter and the collector said we will dig up your daughter and put her on your front porch if you don't pay your bill so uh, I'm paraphrasing that it is exactly right in my book um, I don't have the book ready for you to buy so or, or download for free or whatever is going to happen but um, these are not necessarily nice people and they're not on the level with you so um, it's the right thing to do also if you ever look at the documentation that they bring to court if you challenge them and you look at the documentation that they bring to court it's absolute crap I think I can say crap on YouTube I'm not sure I hope I don't get banned um, but if you look at, at the documentation they have affidavits by people that couldn't possibly know anything about your account you know they have the robo signing scandal um, with mortgages we have a robo signing scandal with credit cards also when they collect from you it'll be somebody from just to go back to the Palisades example I was using it'll be somebody from Palisades that will say that you open an account with Chase in 2007 you made your last payment in 2008 and then Palisades bought it in 2009 or whatever how could that po person possibly have first-hand knowledge and put in an affidavit into court when you opened that account they couldn't they didn't see it so these are things that we normally let slide all these things about affidavits and the paperwork that they give most of us just take it for granted and we don't question that and that is a, a, a big thing it's an important thing to do when you're fighting collection issues is to look at the documentation that people have against you because usually it is it's horrible documentation uh, I was just looking at a lawsuit today this uh, person got sued in Texas and their proof that there was an account was a printout from a computer screen from the collection agency you know there, there was nothing with this person's signature on there there were no terms of the account there was no information about any payments that had been made any charges that had been made and that was their court evidence so you know the person that came to me for help um, didn't pick that up didn't didn't think about it. it was like well there's the proof that I, I have an account there now that's not proof and it's not proof of the balance either so anyhow a, a little bit of a rant there um, I promise not to cut up these videos but this is kinda like three little segments that I'm gonna to put together and I just wanted to explain why I fight debt collectors I'm running out of fights to fight so uh, it's time to start talking about it a little bit more um, when I first started this I was a little bit concerned that if I was on YouTube or um, talked to too many people about it that that um, they would fight me harder or something like that I don't know but um, I don't really have too many people left to sue so um, might as well talk about it now and help out as many people as I can so with that I'll um, get on with uh, another video after this on something more specific I just wanted to tell you why I'm here and why I'm doing this I'm here to fight the good fight fight the essential fight so Boiler Williams 
Uh, check out my website at notlegaladvice.org. Check me out on uh, Facebook. Um, you can go to my website and see all the social media stuff. No sense ram rambling through all of that. Um, have a great night. This is the legal disclaimer. While the information on this site deals with legal issues, it does not constitute legal advice. The materials in this video and related websites are provided for informational purposes only and do not constitute legal advice. We do not advise on the application of law to an individual's specific circumstances. Although we go to great lengths to make sure our information is accurate and useful, we recommend you consult a lawyer if you want professional assurance that our information and your interpretation of it is appropriate to your particular situation. There are no lawyers in this video or on the notlegaladvice.org family of websites. The contact information for this video is notlegaladvice.org, that is the main blog, nlapublishing.org, that is the main book site. The email address is boiler at notlegaladvice.org. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to email me. I'd love to hear from you.